What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who review. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 15th Doctor Shooty Gatwa story, Boom. So this is the third episode of Season 1, the new season, and written by Stephen Moffat, of course, returning to Doctor Who since he departed after his kind of tenure with Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi as the Doctor when he was a showrunner. He's now back with Russell T Davis to write this one episode of Season 1. Um, and I went into this one fairly excited if you've seen my reviews of Church on Ruby Road, Space Babies, and The Devil's Chord, you would have known that I've not been the biggest fan of really any of those stories so far. I don't think any of them have really blown me away, and the the best one for me is probably The Devil's Chord, um, but even that I wasn't the biggest fan of. I went into this one hopeful because it looked quite a lot darker from the trailer. Um, Stephen Moffat I thought would bring something different to this than RTD has so far and um, yeah I just went into this one hoping it was going to be a bit darker a bit less silly and for the most part I think that is the case um, I can quite easily say that this is my favorite episode so far out of shooties out of shooties episode so far um, but it is definitely a very different episode it's a fairly slow moving episode it is a very stuck in one place episode but um, yeah let's get into this one starting off with the cast Shooty Gatwa as the 15th Doctor. Shooty is really starting to come into his own as the Doctor. For me, he still hasn't quite hit that mark yet of, yes, this is the Doctor. You know, every actor that plays the Doctor has a moment where I think this this is the Doctor. Um, it took quite a while for Jodie to come round to me, um, but then other Doctors like uh, Smith, even Capaldi in some ways, um, although, you know, his first season was a bit on the rocks with his character, but like Tennant, Eccleston, fairly quickly, I could think, I could say, yes, they are the Doctor. For me, Shooty's getting there. He has his moments. He's not quite there yet, but in this episode, he does really shine. I mean, I, mean, I think on the most part, he has been very good so far uh, this season, but um, yeah, his chemistry with Millie Gibson especially is really, really good, especially in this episode, so only have to say good things about his performance here. Millie Gibson as Ruby Sunday, also really good. I have quite enjoyed Ruby's uh, character so far this season. I'm very intrigued as to what they're doing with it. Obviously, it's going to be a fairly big thing, um, you know, with everything that's going on with her character. And I think Millie Gibson's doing a very good job at the performance. Once again, great, great chemistry with Shuti Gatwa. The two have such good chemistry. It's really good, but it's not this, it's not this, you know, romantic chemistry that we had with, you know, the Doctor and Rose or... Um, somewhat Doctor and Martha and, you know, the Doctor and Amy in some ways, you know, it's not, this is just a pure friendship, having a blast sort of relationship, very much, I mean, I say similar to the Doctor and Bill, but that was more of a kind of student professor sort of um, relationship, whereas this is more of a, they're just really good friends, I just, I think their chemistry is so good. I'm also going to mention Varada Sethu as Mundy Flynn, sorry if I'm pronouncing the Verada's name incorrectly, um, the main reason I'm talking about her is because she has been revealed as the new companion for season two, um, possibly I think with Millie Gibson as far as we, as far as we know so far, uh, Ruby as a character is not leaving the show next season but we are going to get a new character uh, played by Verada, however, um, we get introduced to this character here, Mundy, who I don't think is going to be the new companion, but um, played by Verada. So, and as far as I know, this was a surprise. She wasn't in the cast, you know, the initial cast list for this episode. So it was very much a surprise for her to be in this story. I don't know if it's just, oh, look, we've got the same actor playing a character here and it's not really going to be mentioned later on. Or if there is something going on here, the fact that, you know, people didn't know that she was going to be in this episode, there was no, you know, cast list for it, makes me think there's something interesting going on here. So uh, she did a good a good performance in the part. I haven't really seen a lot of her personally. I've watched a little bit of Andor, but I haven't actually got through it all yet. Um, and she's good in that from what I've seen. But um, yeah, in this one, very, very good. All good things from the cast, I will say. The cast in this one is very, very good. Even the child actress, I think, is decent as well. She's not terrible. She's not amazing, but she's fine. Um, and yeah, all round, pretty good stuff. Right, so let's get on to some parts of this episode, starting off with the ambulance thing that kills injured people. First of all, uh, Susan Twist is the... The ambulance. I haven't actually talked about Susan Twist because, well, one, I don't know who she is as an actress, um, and I didn't really get, you know, under. I didn't realize that she was popping up all over the place. But since I've watched other reviews, 
I now realize that she has appeared in every episode so far. I don't think Church on Ruby Road, but she's been in all three episodes so far of season one as different characters. So there's obviously something going on there. Um, so I'm interested in that. But anyway, just talking about, you know, what I'm talking about here, the ambulance. So there's like these little robot things that have this woman's face on them that uh, kill people when they get injured. And we find out a bit later on you know, more about why that's happening. But um, yeah, I thought it was the cold open to this episode. I thought was very good. A little bit long. It was quite a long cold open, but um, set a lot of things up. Got me quite excited. So yeah, I did like all that. The Doctor steps on a landmine. So this was kind of the, the thing at the end of the cold open. The Doctor steps on this landmine after he comes running out of the TARDIS, after he hears someone kind of screaming. Um, so he runs out, steps on this landmine, and then the titles roll, and he's stuck on that landmine for the rest of the episode. It's a very interesting concept, keeping the Doctor stuck to one place. A lot of people, I think, thought that this was going to be a Doctor Light story, where he was kind of stuck there in place, Ruby would have to go off and do her own thing to save him, and we wouldn't see a lot of the Doctor. That wasn't really the case. Uh, the Doctor was in it pretty much the whole way through, but he was stuck in that same, that one spot. But everybody was just in that one spot, um, which is cool. It kind of gives me Midnight vibes, which is an episode that I, I like. I don't quite rate it as highly as some people, personally, because I just find it a bit annoying. You know, all the, all the, uh, the passengers are quite annoying, but, you know, I do still... For what that episode is, I do really enjoy it. This is a similar sort of episode in that regard, that we're stuck in one location, one place. It's quite slow moving, um, but yeah, that whole thing of the Doctor being on the landmine I thought was a cool concept. Call back to Villain Guard, the weapons manufacturer. I thought that was really, really cool. You know, we had the whole thing of this landmine was created in Villain Guard, which, if you don't remember, is where uh, Captain Jack Harkness's squareness gun came from that we learnt about in Stephen Moffat's first ever episode, The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances. So I thought that was a really, really cool callback. Ruby handing the Doctor the smelted body kind of vase veil thing so um kind of urn so yeah she picks up this thing off the ground because the doctor he's on the landmine on one foot and he says he needs to kind of balance out his weight he wants to put his foot down because you know he can't just keep balancing on one foot it's gonna it's not gonna work out for him so he needs to be able to put his foot down but he needs to balance out the weight so that the mine doesn't go off so we he tells Ro ruby to go grab something that he can hold on to to balance out the weight she grabs this kind of urn thing um, and it turns out it's not an urn, it is actually a person's body that's been put into like a, a, a thing and that is basically a dead body in, it's not just an urn of ashes, it is a dead body in a, a capsule thing. Um, very dark, very, very dark. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's definitely an interesting, interesting concept of what that is. But then, yeah, Ruby handing that to the Doctor, I thought was a really good scene because the chemistry between the two of them was amazing. The fear on the Doctor's face, and I do like how this Doctor seems to be quite fearful. Um, I think they can go too far with it. Um, so far, I don't think they quite have. I think the odd occasion where he's maybe had a little bit of a tear is a bit too much, but um, I do still quite like the Doctor being scared and being fearful sometimes, and that whole scene was amazing uh, between the two of them. It may be dragged on a little bit too long, but I did really like the scene on the whole. If someone's injury will take too long to heal, the ambulance kills them. So this is where we find out more about what these ambulance robot things are doing. So if somebody is injured on the battlefield, then and that injury will take them too long to heal, the ambulance will kill them because basically um, they don't have the resources to, you know, have this person off the battlefield um, healing they might as well just not be there you know it is a waste of resources and stuff so i think that is a once again it's a very dark concept but it's an interesting concept and i i do like that as a concept it's yeah it's it's different these people are fighting something they've never seen before so this is the whole thing you've got this group of people they're on this planet they're fighting i can't remember what they're called like the caspians caspians or something like that um begins with a c anyway something along those lines and um, but they've never actually seen this creature or whatever it is that they're fighting before. Um, Varada's character Mundi says that oh well we think they're in the they're in the mud or they're in the they're in the fog or you know they're somewhere out there we've never actually seen them but they're there and the doctor's like you they don't exist you've never seen these creatures before but you're at war with them 
How does that work? I thought that was, once again, it was just building intrigue and was very interesting. Ruby gets shot. So this was a, a, an interesting scene where the Doctor starts getting uh, shot by... Who does he get shot by? I think he gets shot by Mundy, doesn't he? Mundy shoots him in the arm for some reason. I think it's something about... She's like, you know, you've got a... I can't remember what it is, but she like shoots him in the hand and then the, the ambulance comes over and it's going to kill the Doctor. But then they realise that if the Doctor gets blown up by this mine, it's apparently going to cause a massive explosion and everybody's going to die. I don't really know where they got that from, but that's apparently a thing because he's a Time Lord. You know, he's not just human. He's going to cause a massive explosion from this. That was... Yeah, I didn't really get that. But um, then... So then Mundy's like, all right, well, to get the ambulance off the Doctor, get it onto me. So you need to injure me. Um, so she tells Ruby to shoot her. I don't know why she didn't just, I don't know, shoot herself in the hand. Could she not have just done that? You know, I don't know. Does she have a knife on her? Stab herself in the hand? You know, what? surely she could do something, but she's like, no, just shoot me in the arm. So then it'll come for me instead. It won't kill the doctor. Um, I don't know what she was going to do after that point other than just die. Was she just going to try and outrun it? I don't really know the logic in that. But in the end, um, Mundy's lover ends up coming down, sees Ruby pointing the gun at Mundy and then shoots Ruby and then Ruby's dead. So that was a pretty impactful moment. I mean, I knew that Ruby wasn't going to die here because we've seen in trailers and everything that she is in future episodes. So I know that something was going to happen here that she wouldn't die three episodes into the season, but it was still quite a dramatic moment. They're fighting against their own AI without knowing it. So, you know, I talked about earlier how they don't know these creatures, they've never seen them before. Well, that is because they don't exist. <laughs> this this race they're in a war against doesn't exist. Um, this there's They're basically fighting against this AI, which is the ambulance. Um, and yeah, um, basically what's happening is the ambulance, from what I understand, goes out there. If somebody's injured, it kills them because to make it seem like to everybody else that there is a war going on you know people are dying here you know they leave these these uh, smelted bodies behind these messages and for their loved ones and makes it look like they have died out there in a war there is a war going on whereas in fact there isn't a war going on um it's it's all fake so that was definitely a bit of a you know bit of a like wow okay that's that's something that's something different Ruby then gets revived. Now, I didn't 100% understand how Ruby was revived. We have the whole thing once again, third time in a row, where we have kind of time somewhat stops, the snow starts falling down, um, we hear a bit of music, and I'm assuming that's going to make more sense later on. Obviously, you know, we've had it in every episode so far where snow starts falling, something to do with Ruby. That happens, uh, Ruby ends up getting revived somehow um, and then that then saves the doctor from the mine um, he can now step off the mine I might have just missed something I didn't 100% understand how that all worked what that was all about really but um, yeah it was it was it was something <laughs> and finally the fish fingers and custard reference Love that. Of course, Stephen Moffat's got to get that in there, the old fish fingers and custard. The doctor's like, if I come back here, you know, I'll, I'll come back and see how you guys are doing. Uh, make sure you get me some fish fingers and custard. That's my favorite food. Um, I just thought that was a nice, once again, little callback. Quite a few nice callbacks in this episode, especially to Stephen Moffat scripts from the past. Um, so, yeah. So, a rating out of 10 for Boom. Now, I've said this before, I don't really know until I watch this whole season, how exactly I'm going to feel about all these stories. At this current point in time, though, I'm going to give Boom a 7 out of 10. It's definitely my favourite so far. Um, I thought the the intro was quite exciting. The dynamic between all the characters, but especially between the Doctor and Ruby, was amazing. Like I said, their chemistry is just electric, um, and that was a big thing about this episode. However, I do think that it was a bit too slow. For a Stephen Moffat script, it actually felt like it didn't have a lot going on. You know, Stephen Moffat, mainly in when he was showrunner, but he was always known for having quite convoluted and, you know, very busy scripts. This was not one of those. It was quite simple. Um, although I don't 100% understand how some of the things work, like Ruby getting revived and all that sort of stuff. 
most of the concepts were fairly simple. It was very slow moving. Um, and ultimately, yeah, I did find it a little bit boring and a little bit too slow in the middle. But the, the start was interesting. The end was interesting enough, um, although maybe a bit confusing. And yeah, it was it was still a good episode. This is one I'm I'm glad that it didn't have it didn't have the cringy, silly moments that the first three stories, really, including Ruby Road, um, have had in them. So because of that, a bit more of a serious story. I do give it a seven out of ten, but I still think there's room for some better stuff here. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.